Chrissy and Ben from the Shires, welcome to Smooth Country. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Again, should I say, because you guys popped in to see us in the studio. In fact, you were the last people before this terrible time we've had over the last couple of years. You were the last guest to come in person to us. So um, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. And hopefully this is more positive times from now on as well. Absolutely, yeah. We, re we remember coming into the studio before. I mean, we just we were just releasing our fourth album at that point and we were, you know, just about to go out on the road and, you know, go out on tour and stuff and then everything just shut down. So it was such a strange time for us. But like you say, it, you know, everything's feeling so much more positive with the, the new album. So we're very excited to be here. No, absolutely. I was thinking about you guys earlier, just before we arranged this. And, you know, you were all good to go. I mean, everyone had a bit of a tough time over the last two years. We, we know that. But you guys were good to go. And then suddenly the brakes were slammed on. And as artists, that must be so frustrating, especially your industry that was probably hit harder. You know, literally, that was it, wasn't it? So did you use that time to work on this album, this 10-year plan, by the way, out today? I've heard a couple of tracks from it so far. We've been playing I See Stars a lot, incidentally, and I love it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. But I haven't heard the rest of the album yet. So um, tell us about it. How did it come about? Yeah, I mean, it was all born out of that kind of crazy two years. Like you said, we released our last album like a week before lockdown. And yeah, I mean, I think we use the pandemic time quite differently. I spent a lot of time songwriting after I got over the initial shock and frustration and, and also over the homeschool. So I've got a five-year-old and a three-year-old and I had to homeschool them. So once I got through the shock of all that, I was like, I should, I should, we should have been on tour right now and I'm actually doing homeschool stuff. Um, but then I used, yeah, the good good eight, 10, 12 months just writing in, in my garden shed uh, in, in the garden. I've got a little studio set up here. So yeah, I did that and then did a lot of Zoom writing over the internet which was quite you know, new but interesting and it was actually quite, that was quite of a positive thing because you got to write people from Nashville from LA and from the UK as well and um, yeah pretty much all the songs bar the very first song Cut Me Loose every other song came out of this, this sort of pandemic time. The uh, title of the album 10 Year Plan I mean the way things have been going I think a six month plan for anybody right now is a good <laughs> idea 10 years is optimistic at best but is this about you guys I mean clearly looking ahead and hoping for better times and you know moving on from what we had is it was that the idea? Well, 10 Year Plan is, it, there's a song on the album called 10 Year Plan, um, but also it sort of coincides with our 10 year anniversary, which is actually next year. And just looking back over the years that we've been together, celebrating, you know, all those years that we've been together, really. Okay, well, that makes sense. I didn't know if there was anything deeper about it or, you know, you, you had literally a 10 year plan ahead to... to... <laughs> to conquer everything. Um, I've got to ask you as well, just when we were about to talk um, the last time, when you guys came in and you, you know, there was, there was speculation you were going to appear at C2C and then it was confirmed and that was another thing that got dropped. So I'm wondering if there's any coincidence, the fact that you decided to release the album on the very opening day of this much anticipated country to country, or is that a total coincidence or are you going to be appearing again, can you say? <laughs> But I mean, yeah, we, we can't say it's a coincidence because, <laughs> I mean, it seems like the perfect weekend to release a country album, doesn't it, around C2C. And it's our favourite time of year. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we'll be making an appearance, I mean, I, I would say it's very likely, shall we say. We're, we're presenting on the main stage, which would be great. But in terms of making a musical appearance, I think it'd be, uh, yeah, I, I would stop taking bets on that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I, when I said coincidence, I was clearly digging for a bit more info, you know, because, um, yeah, that, that, what are the chances? But, um, I mean, okay, so as artists who've been starved from the point of view of being able to go on stage, because it must be wonderful working on these songs, and, you know, you've just said you've had enough time to do it um, in, in, the, in the lockdown situation. You must be desperate, though, to get out there and perform in front of people. Yeah, we, you know, it was... It was such a sort of identity crisis when the sort of pandemic hit because all we know is to sort of connect people in, in person. So that was really strange and surreal for us. But we, we managed to go out on an acoustic tour just before Christmas and then a couple more dates um, in January. And it was just so wonderful to be there in person and live music to be back again. And so that was 
really uplifting and, and just really good to to get out and perform again but we've got um our big headliner tour as well coming up in april and may which we're putting everything together for that all the lighting rigs we've got the, the boys ready for the rehearsals ahead of time as well so yes yeah, some very exciting times ahead with some live music again Oh wow! I bet I bet you can't wait. I know you were on the road doing the, if you like the, um, the 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 less big structured show. But are all the dates in? Will you be adding to them? Is it a, is it a UK wide tour? If people watching this right now, what can they expect? I mean, it's a pretty big tour. Yeah, it's um, I think it's twenty four dates or something, and most of it is sold out. From totally honest, um, apart from Folkestone, something's going on in Folkestone. We've only sold about forty percent of there. <laughs> Go to Folkestone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everyone just send on Folkestone. But apart from that, yeah, it's it's doing really well. Um, the acoustic tour we did at the end of the year we, last year was was amazing, and. Uh, yeah, it's really given us this excitement to get out with the full band because it would have been four years since we last did um, a full band show. So it's um, we're very, very excited for it. Well, we're learning quite a bit from today already, just catching up with you guys. But if nothing else, if you're having trouble getting tickets for the Shires, wherever you live, head to folks to like the <laughs> <guys there. laughs> You see the hotel prices just jump up next week or something. <laughs> There's a song for the next album. Um, <laughs> head to folks, you know, folks if, if nothing else. So, um, any any plans to like go international at all? Like to, to take your show back out on the road, maybe towards Nashville or or beyond England at least. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're in talks with the US label at the moment, so hopefully we'll be able to get out there. We, you know. Um, be able to just go and spread our music out there. I mean, we've got five albums worth of material, so it'd be great to kind of go over there and, and spread some UK country out there as well. Absolutely, because clearly it's generally speaking a one-way system across the Atlantic. It would be it would be lovely for you guys to get back. And and with, with that back catalogue too, when people you know who don't know you already in that market, there's a whole stack of stuff there, isn't there? Yeah, like we said, five albums worth. I mean, especially with the live show, so it's hard to pick. You know, there's some there's some songs that there's some songs that go straight in. There's some songs you know the big hits, but um, you know, there's often little songs that you know you want to play because they mean something to you personally. And then there's other songs you just forget about as yeah. well. Like just literally forget that we released them. I've got um, you know playlists and, and and stuff just pops up on shuffle. And sometimes sometimes I'll be like, this is a nice song. Who's this? And it's like, oh, we wrote that. <laughs> there's just so <laughs> many songs now. You know. <laughs> It's almost been, yeah, yeah, because you've got such a catalogue. Yeah, that must, that must be such a weird feeling. It really must. Um, yeah. I see, um, Ben, you know, your, your setup behind you there. Um, so that, if that's your home studio. Is that, is that where you record or is that where you just, um, you know, rehearse? Yeah, so we did everything. Um, so I basically set up in here um, late at night after the kids had been, you know, finished the homeschool. My wife would come back from school. She's a teacher. So yeah, I'd lock myself away in here. Um, I've, I've got a two, two litre bottle of whiskey that Chrissy bought me. Three litre, actually, I should say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I just kind of, I just work away. And yeah, m most of the parts, like in I See Stars, for example, most of those parts are from here. And then I sent them over to our producer, Lindsay, in Nashville. He would kind of add to them or embellish them or change some parts. And then Chrissy came in once he'd sent that track back to us and Chrissy would vocal with me in here. And, um, you know, that, that was kind of a blessing as well. We got to have a lot more control and a lot more fun doing it that way because there wasn't this real crazy time pressure you get when you're in the studio, particularly in Nashville. I mean, the technology, yeah, clearly you're, you've, got a, you've got a clock ticking in the old style, haven't you? I mean, you've booked your studio and you've got to get it done. Whereas now, you know, you, you can do it like you just say. It's, it's, that's, that's incredible. And obviously it enables us to be able to all catch up in different, um, you know, locations right now as well. Mm -hmm. Really difficult question. And I'll understand if you, if you have trouble answering it because when you, you know, release a whole new set of songs, you're excited about them all. But both of you, do you have a particular favourite from the album or is that just not able, you're not able to answer? It changes depending on how you're feeling. Today, I'm feeling very uplifted. So I would go with Cut Me Loose, which is the opening track of the album. And basically, this song has been 
we we went to Nashville for our sec to write for our second album, and Ben happened to find a songwriter in a in a bar playing this particular song. So it's the only song on the album that was not co-written by either one of us. But um, we recorded it for our second album, and for whatever reason, it didn't get taken. Um, and so all these years later, I I put it forward, and I was like, please, can we record this one and release it? Because I just think it's such a smash. So I'm really excited for that particular one for sure. Okay, well that's 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 Chrissy's. How about you, Ben? Yeah, I love Cut Me Loose, but I think my favourite at the moment is Plot Twist, which is a very kind of acoustic song and uh, musically a bit different for us. We, we've always loved the civil wars and close harmonies and sort of stuff that really makes you feel something. And um, that we love ballads, and but that song is a, is a bit of a step on for us. I think our fans will be quite surprised by it. But it's still very much us and, and country, but it, it's quite different sounding, definitely. I love that story, though, um, that you told, Chrissy, where you're in Nashville, you just discover a guy with the song. I mean, the ch what are the chances, you know? And, and then yeah. pick, picking it all these years later to, to feature on, on the album. So, yeah. well, guys, it's, it's been really great to catch up. Hopefully one of these days, again, we'll be able to do it in person. And well, yeah. maybe as I'm wandering around this, this C to C over the weekend. <laughs> who knows, who knows? <laughs> If you guys happen to be there, we, we might bump into each other, but failing that, it would be great to catch up in person, you know, like I say, at some point. Definitely, That would definitely. be lovely. It's going to be a crazy C to C weekend. I don't know how we're all going to manage it, but um, I'm excited to see us all on Monday and how we, we get on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And looking at the forums, I mean, people have been starved of live music full stop and of new music yeah. up to a point full stop. And then everybody's converging down for this massive, okay, it is going to be incredible. So yeah. if you're appearing, good luck, and I'm sure it'll be a blast. <laughs> and um, the, the very best of luck to you guys. Oh, thank, thank you so, you so much. Thank you so much, Damon. I really appreciate it. Yeah, all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye now.